After boot camp, a sailor's path can go one of several ways, depending on a few things. First, whether or not they are a nuke. Since the vast majority of sailors aren't nukes, we'll save that for later. The next question is whether or not the sailor has a rate at all. If not, they go directly to their ship, no schooling. If they do have a rate, their path depends on if they have volunteered for submarine duty or not. If they haven't, they will graduate boot camp and go to their A school. A schools are where sailors learn the basics of doing their job. The focus of this video will be where those brave, gullible, non-nuclear souls who did volunteer for submarine duty go. BESS, Basic Enlisted Submarine School. Dive, dive. Code red in four compartment middle level. Torpedoes in the water. No, I never have thought I was smart. I thought the people I dealt with were dumb, were dumb including you. What is BESS? So BESS is basic enlisted submarine school. It's essentially, you know, kind of like your basic submarine qualification card. It's the intro to submarines and everything like that. You learn all the different systems, what they do, um you know basic submarine stuff that's really all it is all submariners are born here in Groton, connecticut at the submarine base uh, this is the place where we build and launch our submarines to go to sea and this is the place where we intellectually build and launch submariners sub school is approximately eight weeks long it's typically broken up such that the first two weeks are in dock students will sit through long briefs complete paperwork get mailboxes, and class up. The next four weeks is the actual schooling. Students are taught Monday through Wednesday, have tests on Thursdays, and Fridays are reserved for retests for those that fail. What do you learn about? You learn about submarine history, uh, World War II mostly, um, the Nautilus, the Turtle, all the big submarine uh, milestones you'll learn the high and low pressure air systems they'll show you pictures of how of the like schematic diagrams and everything like that um, but they don't expect you to learn it they just it's a basic understanding of how an air system works hydraulics um i think plumbing and then they go over like the different rates that you could go into if you're secf there are many rates that go to sub school missile techs logistics specialists, culinary specialists, yeomen, ITSs, FTs, nav ETs, sonar techs, auxiliary mechanics or A-gangers, and torpedo men. FTs, ETVs, and SDSs are combined into SCCF until the end of subschool. Logistics specialists, culinary specialists, and yeomen will typically go to A school before subschool. Missile techs, ITSs, A-gangers, and torpedo men will go to their A school following graduation from sub school. As for the SECF rates, you put the order of the importance that you want. So for me, I think I put like radio first, then Navy T, then sonar, and I left fire control off there. Um, and then it's just based on, I guess, I maybe what you scored on the ASVAB, I'm not really sure. And then the obvious need for rate. You can come out as a Navy T, which is just, you know, the navigational and electronics technicians. Uh, we work on, that's my rate. We worked on uh, a lot of systems on the boat, you know, our atmosphere monitoring, radar, some sonar equipment, all, all the phone systems on the boat, um, and then some other, you know, minor systems that didn't really, we didn't have to do a lot with. Then you have fire control technician. They are the ones who, we, they, they track all the contacts. And then you have sonar, which find the contacts and they use that information that they find and send it to fire control to uh, deal with them from there on. And they also help with contact management. The last two weeks of BESS are typically the most fun and most challenging two weeks of the program. These weeks are when the students go through the high-risk trainers. You have a couple different trainers. You have the fire trainer. The firefighting trainer is, you know, 
as it says in the name, you've practiced firefighting on some range. You get to uh, learn all the different um, extinguishers, how to handle the fire hose, different types of fire hoses and every, and you know, just all the basic stuff about firefighting on a submarine escape trainer. What we do here is we teach real time submarine escape, knowing how subs operate. It's never in a good place. It's never in the Caribbean. It's always somewhere you don't want to be. When they first show up, they go through a med screening process uh, just to make sure that their body can undertake pressure before we even get to the pressure portion. They're taught basic diving physiology, you know, what happens to your body when you're under pressure, types of things that can go wrong, and then we do a pressure test. Put them in a chamber with an inside tender or a dive medical technician, uh, we press them down to 60 feet, and we leave them there for 10 minutes, and we bring them back up. And it's just to make sure that their bodies can go under pressure, because some people's anatomies just can't do it. So our main concern it involves having gas-filled spaces in your body expanding to the point where they rupture. So we teach them to never ever hold their breath during submarine escape. If they were to hold their breath, that could lead to many different problems, death being the most serious. Obviously, we feel this is a very important attribute for them to be learning, just as anything else in the school. However, this isn't something that we encourage them to actually utilize. And the flooding trainer. You get to try and stop flooding you get to do it on a whole bunch of different pipes try all the different uh techniques of stopping flooding uh learn basic communications for a casualty and you do the same thing in uh the fire trainer so you get to learn the vocabulary and how to say everything during those uh trainers that way when you get to the boat you have a little bit of knowledge on how to actually speak through the phones and everything like that. So when I leave boot camp and go to Bess, where do I live? Uh, you live in one of two barracks. Uh, that's really in throughout all of Bess. You uh, or throughout all of sub school, really, you just live in the barracks. Unless you're married, you can live off base. But I think that's rare. I only knew really one or two people that were able to do that. For those who have gone there, the rooms are tiny. When I was there, it was three people to a room all the time. You barely had any privacy, barely had any room, anything like that. But it's not like you're constantly being micromanaged like you were in boot camp. They give you free reign. They only really intervene if you get in trouble or you're doing something you're not supposed to. For best, you actually do march to and from lunch. I heard it on the radio. I heard it on the radio. Sounds so good to me. Sounds so good to me. U.S. Navy submarine. U.S. Navy submarine. And then once you get out of there, you, they just release you for liberty and stuff. I don't know if you you know we want to go with this in depth, but you start off at white card, and then after I think like. A few weeks you go to yellow card and as long as your class is you know doing well and you are um making your grades and everything you should get promoted to blue card before you end best which is the highest liberty which means you essentially have free reign over whatever yellow is you can't go off base during the week, but you're allowed to wear civilian clothes and everything like that. And then on the weekends, you can go off base. And then white card is uniform all the time, and you're not allowed to leave base, so. For many sailors, this is the first real chance at freedom since joining the Navy. Unfortunately, Grand Connecticut is largely a boring shithole, especially in the winter months. However, as with many things in the Navy, there are fun times to be had. It's just a matter of how hard you look and who you spend your time with. Um, I do remember when, you know, we were instructing. I was uh, up in the A school building for Navy Tees, and some students had to, decided to draw a dick in the snow. And you could see it from the building, and it, like, all, all the chiefs and everything got super pissed. Like, most, but most, most of the instructors, you know, acted like they were upset, but deep down they're like, okay, that's that's pretty good. The number one goal should be to stay out of trouble and progress through the training pipeline. After I graduate basic enlisted submarine school, what is after that? So it depends on what rate you are. So SECF, 
you go through ATT, which is apprentice technical training, where you learn uh, basic troubleshooting on electrical components. Uh, you learn how to calculate voltage, how to, you know, all of the different components that are on circuit boards. So you have relays, uh, capacitors, you learn uh, basic logic. So and or gates, and, uh, all those that is self paced. So it's as fast or you, it takes as long as it takes you to get through it. So some people might go through it in a week. Other people's might go through two, three weeks. Um, it all depends on how, uh, how fast they want to go through it. But the fat for me, they always said the faster you get through all this, the faster you get to the boat. So for ATT, I try to go as fast as I could. And then after ATT, you would go to techno, which is tactic, tactical computer network operator, where that's where you learn basics about networking, uh, you know, different computer, uh, diagrams and all everything about how to do network work, which is a lot of it stuff, um, which I never really did on the boat. So it, it wasn't really super useful. And then after techno, you go to your a school which is where you actually learn your job and then after a school you go to your boat for yeoman uh culinary specialist and logistics specialist after best they go straight to their boat so i think i can't remember if they have their orders or not before they get to best or if they get them while they're in best i'm not 100 sure but all they have to do is go through best and then go to their boat and for the machinist mates, uh, you'll go to BMS, which is just basic mechanic school where they learn, you know, the basics about being a mechanic. And then after you graduate that, you go to your A school. While this may seem like a lot of training, it's important to recognize that the learning has really just begun. These junior sailors now go to their boat. Despite having had several months of training, they can take up to a full year to become fully qualified in submarines. Next episode, we'll discuss the initial training pipeline for nuclear trained sailors. Those sailors have up to two and a half years of training before going to the fleet. However, in a much shorter time, BEST prepares these sailors better in many facets. Non-nuke sailors are typically much better at shipwide casualty response, more knowledgeable about submarine history, and usually more familiar with many of the traditions and codes of submarining. Make sure you have an alarm. Because that's the biggest thing that people get in trouble for is, oh, my alarm didn't go off and they, they end up late to class. Or, you know, they didn't have an alarm. And the, you know, instructor will ask, why were you late? Oh, I, I just, my phone alarm didn't go off. And they'll just say, okay, well, then go down to the next, get a $10 alarm clock and use that. So just make sure that you are on time. That is the number one thing to do. Um, listen to your instructors. They have been in your shoes. They know what they're doing and everything they tell you is for a reason. They're not just saying things to say it. Um, and then just, you know, like, like I said, listen and follow, follow instructions. Don't be late. And then that, that's really how you succeed through all of, you know, all of your training, all of, your whole naval career, just be on time, follow directions and, you know, don't do anything stupid. If, if you, if you have to ask yourself, should I be doing this? You probably shouldn't be doing that. Like and subscribe.